it's I think this is a new frontier. And, you know, if you're not having these conversations and these debates and discussions internally, th this is the conversation that is happening externally amongst the music community. I really don't don't think that you should feel threatened. I really think that, you know, the role of the artist is going, it's not going to go away. It's going to change. How are we going to work with this so we all don't go out of business? What's going on? Welcome to the New Music Business. I'm your host, Ari Herstand, author of How to Make It in the New Music Business, the book. The third edition is out now everywhere in all formats, hardcover, ebook, audiobook, however you like to consume your books, you can check out the third edition. Now, today my guest is Oleg Stavitsky. He is the CEO and co-founder of the AI Music Platform Endel. However, he doesn't call it AI uh, Music Platform. He calls it a wellness music company um, that just happens to use AI technology uh, to generate the music. Now, uh, this is a very controversial topic right now in the industry, uh, as just AI is controversial in every industry. Um, and we dig into what he thinks the function of Endel is inside the music industry. Um, and I challenged him quite a bit. Uh, this is not a I would say a a, <laughs> a a fluff conversation. Um, this is I, I this is we we go deep. I, I think I, I challenged him on points that maybe he has not um, doesn't receive on a regular basis by the people inside of his company, and I appreciate that he hung with me and um, and and kind of answered all of my questions. Um, it was a it was a very in-depth conversation and about the ethics surrounding AI uh, technology within the music industry. Now, Endel is a company uh, which we discussed that they actually distribute music that this company has created themselves. And you may have remembered the quote unquote fake artist controversy uh, that started years ago, but still exists en masse uh, specifically within kind of this uh, the functional music market of of uh, soundscapes and meditation music, which is the corner of the industry that Endel um, currently controls or at least participates in. Uh, Endel has released thousands of tracks uh, created in-house by their AI technology and then honed a bit by their in-house producers. Um, you know, we discuss the ethics around uh, what he thinks about Endel taking all of this market share when their tracks have millions of songs and uh, millions of streams, rather, and those that revenue could have gone to artists. Whereas with the current pro rata model of streaming services uh, that's based on stream share, a lot of that money is now going to an AI music company instead of artists. He had a very interesting response to that. And um, so, I, you know, this is where we're at as an industry right now. Their AI is coming, whether we like it or not. This is one use case for it in the meditation music space in kind of this, this wellness music market um, with soundscapes, which is what they uh, focus on. And uh, they do collaborations, though, as well. They've collaborated with James Blake, with Grimes, with Sia, with uh, the R&B artist Black, and these collaborations, some of them, uh, the artist has leaned in and created uh, stems specifically for the um, for for Endel and and for this collaboration to create soundscapes from. And other times, uh, Endel has taken stems from one of the artist's albums and created soundscapes around an album, almost kind of like a remix, reimagining that that album. And when Endel has done this, it is done it through their AI technology, analyzing those stems and that music and creating soundscapes kind of um, for for uh, the reimagining of the album. And, and these are officially released. You can, you can find all of these collaborations on the DSPs, on Apple Music, on Amazon Music, on Tidal, on Spotify. They're all out there. So you can check it out. You can find Endel. Uh, they have an app, E-N-D-E-L. Uh, you can find them on the DSPs, E-N-D-E-L. They have an artist profile. 
Um, you can find all of us that make the show happen at Ari's Take on Instagram, TikTok, Threads, Twitter, uh, Ari's Take.com. That's where you can get on our email list and stay up to date with all the happenings on the new music business. You can find me at Ari Herstan on Instagram and Threads a bit. Uh, and Twitter, but mostly during uh, Dodger season when I'm on Twitter. But right now, if you could just pause this episode and hit the like, subscribe, follow button, give us a thumbs up on YouTube, leave a comment if you're there, uh, leave us a five star review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Those really help. All right, let's kick into the show. Oleg Stavitsky, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Mm hmm. So um, I. Everyone is talking about AI. Uh, it is what has dominated the headlines over the last year. I think you know, twenty twenty three is kind of going to be the year. This this like massive tipping point for AI uh, across the board. You know, um, everybody kind of initially uh, heard about it through using ChatGPT or something like that, and now it's really starting to break into the music industry. Uh, we had the CEO of, of Boomi on uh, last year, which is another kind of AI music platform. But uh, what you're doing with Endel, uh, I'm, I'm, it, I'm very fascinated by. It. And I'd love for people that are just not familiar with what Endel is, if you could just explain, uh, just let it, just tell everybody what Endel is. Yeah, we're not an AI music company. <laughs> so that's what I like to say, right? Like we're... Okay. We have always thought of Endel as a wellness music company. So Endel okay. is a company that creates products that help people feel better with the power of sound. The thing is, in order for us to kind of harness the power of sound, we had to use AI, right? Like in order for the neuroscience to really work, uh, you know, you, we, we, we have to use AI. So we never, you know, we never started an AI company. You know, we've we've always started a, kind of a, a a company that will help people, yeah, sleep, relax, uh, focus better using the power of sound. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm I'm gonna ask you when you say you had to use AI for the neuroscience to work. Um, talk to me about what you mean when you talk about neuroscience and what the intention is behind that and why you had to use AI and you couldn't just use composers? Yeah. So back in 20, late 2016, early 2017, me and my co-founders, and I'm, I'm just one of the six co-founders at Endel, actually, um, mm -hmm. we kind of had this idea. You know, we were, we were looking at um, a few trends kind of converging, one of which was obviously the rise of functional or wellness music on the DSPs. Like if you if you look at, you know, all of these playlists, uh, sleep, relax, focus, concentration, meditation, you know, they've, this category is growing like fire. It's crazy. Like we're talking tens mm -hmm. of billions of streams every, every year. Um, so we've observed that, but also at the same time, you know, you could see how sound was becoming increasingly more mobile. You know, you, you, you've had kind of Alexa coming in, you've had AirPods One kind of, so all of these trends kind of converging. And we're, we're also a bunch of ambient music and Brian Eno nerds. So we had this okay. idea of, you know, what if we were to create a technology that instead of you know listening to static pre-recorded playlists on streaming platforms that claim to help you focus relax and sleep but essentially it's just you know an editor um at a dsp just throwing together some tracks some relaxing tracks usually and going mm -hmm. like you should sleep to that like what if we have created a technology that actually generates music sound that is scientifically engineered to help you focus relax and sleep so that was the idea and we started digging into the neuroscience of sound talking to various neuroscientists and very quickly like in one of the first thing that, things that we've learned was it, you know it really needs to be personalized it needs to be adaptive like there's no 
one size fits all, one song or one playlist fits all solution if you really want the signs to work. So it needs to be personalized. The sound needs to adapt to various biometric inputs and, and objective inputs. I'm talking inputs like time of day, weather, your heart rate, your movement, your sex, your age, your chronotype, like how much sleep did you get today? What's your exposure to natural light, your circadian rhythms, all of that stuff. So we were like, oh, <laughs> so that's what we're going to have to do. And then I vividly remember, like, I, I, I turned to my guys and I was like, hey, I think we're going to have to build an AI for this to work. And then, you know, then we've built this technology that basically listens to all of these inputs in real time and generates a soundscape in real time, personalized to you on the spot, on device. And that technology is powering the app and all the app that we've released back in 20. Um, late 2018, um, yeah, and, and on the app, everything is real time and personalized and adaptive. Okay, um, well, that's fascinating, and I, I haven't actually gotten a chance to to test out the app, but I'm going to, and that that sounds fascinating. Um, I'm more interested now because obviously um, the music that you have released on the DSPs like Spotify and Apple Music. Um, that can't it's currently not personalized per user because that just that technology is just not built into the dsps right now um how many songs have you released officially to the dsps oh i think it's close to two thousand tracks now that we have released two thousand tracks yeah i'm i mean i may be wrong actually it may be even more like i've lost count frankly okay so we'll call it thousands um and of these thousands of tracks that you've released to the DSPs, um, were they all created through, were they all created by AI? Yeah. So that's what I was going to say. You know, that very same technology that is powering mm -hmm. and all the app um, kind of is powering what we're doing on the DSPs. Uh, because we have started initially collaborating with artists for the app and, you know, we've worked with artists like Grimes and Plastic Man and Miguel and James Blake uh, for the app. But then we were like, okay, but what would happen if we were to export that music and start putting it on the DSPs? And that led us to first releasing an album with James Blake called Wind Down. Uh, back mm -hmm. in 2022 and you know we looked at the numbers for that album and it, it was it was quite successful um, and let that led us on a path to sign these strategic partnerships with Universal Music and Warner Music and kind of with what we've started doing is we've started working with artists on reimagining their existing music using our technology as mm -hmm. functional a wellness soundscapes. So basically what we're doing is we're taking the stems from their albums, the existing albums, feeding that into our AI, and it creates kind of um, a soundscape version, a functional wellness soundscape version of that music. Got it. Um, so, right, and I that, that's, that makes sense. And I was curious on how the James Blake collaboration um, worked. So um, just if I'm understanding this correctly, uh, James Blake didn't himself collaborate with your platform to create these tracks, these songs. Uh, you took the stems from his existing music and then fed it through your AI and that pumped out a track and then you distributed it. So we've had two projects with James. One that was okay. called Wind Down. For that project, he specifically created stamps. He himself mm. created exclusive stamps for that project, um, following our scientific guidelines. And we fed those stamps into our algorithm, and this is how the wind down soundscape was created. And that first premiered on our app. But then James was like, why don't we release this as an album? And, and you know, we've released that, like an hour of that soundscape 
as a static recording on the DSPs back in 2022. So that was one project. Okay. And then very recently, okay. you know, he's released uh, his amazing, amazing album called Playing Robots Into Heaven. Uh, okay. And that project, he just sent us the stems from that album. He didn't record or create anything specifically for like the soundscape version of that album. And we just fed it into our AI and created a, this chill out soundscape. Um, companion piece right um i noticed on all most if not all of the endel tracks because uh for those that are listening that are not familiar with with uh how endel functions on the dsps um endel is an artist uh it has an artist profile um you know it's it's not an obviously an actual person this is a company um that is pumping out thousands of songs onto the DSPs uh, and all of these songs. So so the James Blake collaboration, uh, there's two artists listed, uh, James Blake and Endel. Uh, and on the Endel artist profile, there are the thousands or so uh, songs um, that you released over, over uh, a few years. Now, I noticed in the credits, uh, there are, let's see, eight i believe songwriters well listed songwriters including yourself on each song including the collaborations with james blake and sia um and the others uh can you who are these eight people that are listed as the songwriters they are you know the six co-founders of endo and key people mm -hmm. that have worked on this project um, and key engineers that have worked on the technology <laughs> that has been used to create okay. the sound. And there are also producers listed, and some of them are uh, different. And who are the producers listed, and who are they? Because you're not listed as a producer on some of these, but you're listed as a songwriter. Explain to me how you're breaking down the difference between the producers and the songwriters. So the producers are people. So the, just I, I would need to explain how the production process works for that. OK, the way, the way the production works is the way our technology works is you take the stems, you feed them into our technology. It analyzes the stems and it creates variations of the stems. So it's basically it creates different versions of the original stems following our scientific guidelines. And then mm -hmm. you can, you know, you can, you can listen to the stems as they are generated. You can discard some of the stems. You can really kind of tweak the parameters um, that the algorithm is going to take into account when synthesizing these new stems. Once you're happy with the stem pack, you go like, okay, give, give me a sleep version, give me a sleep soundscape from the stem pack. And then the algorithm creates a, stem, a soundscape for you. What you can do from there, you can go like, no, I don't like it. Do it again. Now do it again. Now do it again. Or you can, so you can just keep, you know, clicking that refresh button. Or what you can do is you can just double click on the soundscape. And it essentially opens this proto DAW that we have built ourselves that, that is called Endel Studio, where you can really tweak and twist and mold the soundscape um it's you know partially just i mean mirrors the functions of um a normal daw but it has some ai capabilities as well you can go like actually like that you know like the baseline regenerate just that and so that's mm -hmm. those are mm -hmm. the tools that are the, i mean and, and the people who are using these tools are obviously you know, professional composers and producers and musicians that we have actually in-house. So these are the people uh, who operate the tool, so to speak. So like Alexander Vasilenko, yeah. Kirill Bondarenko, those are some of these in-house producers, musicians that are the ones manipulating these tracks and, and I guess, uh, putting it kind of hitting the refresh button or potentially ma manipulating, you know, m more granularly the uh, instrumentation. Exactly. Okay. Um, and the, so 
Um, you mentioned that you're a fan of Brian Eno and and you know artists that have kind of come before that have that have specialized in um, you know more meditative production or ethereal uh, production or just something that is kind of you know can be uh, some people call this. Um, now, I wouldn't say this is Brian Eno, but some people are calling, uh, you know, meditation music as like functional music. It's it's for a, a functional time. And there have been, um, uh, I mean, since since Spotify came out, there have been um, what's called, the controversy was around what they were calling fake artists, meaning uh, artist profiles on Spotify that were not actual people, but they were created to serve the purpose of um, just pumping out music that would get included on playlists, um, popular playlists, generate streams, generate money. My question to you is, um, with the way that the payment structure works on Spotify, which is a pro rata system, which is a stream share model, meaning um, the uh, number of streams that a certain artist gets or a certain song gets, uh, they get paid based on the share of those number of streams against every other stream on the platform. So by the nature of what you're doing, by putting out thousands and thousands of tracks and generating millions and millions of streams um, for your company, do you think that that is helpful to the music industry and ethical when that is taking money away from hardworking artists who are now having to compete with machines and songwriters who are not actual songwriters, but technologists and software engineers that are creating and just pumping out music by AI. I get what you're saying, but our strategy never was and is not, you know, quote unquote, pumping up songs. Like if okay. you look at our catalog, it's, you know, yes, it's a lot of music, but it's not, you know, a gazillion of shitty songs. They're, they're actually... I mean, you have thousands of songs over the span of how many years? Two years, uh, maybe? Yeah. And yeah. what's that? There's there's yeah. no artist that has released that many, that, that amount of volume in, in music. Uh, that's that's not like... You, you have an artist profile, you're putting out all of this music... No human individual artist can do that. That's not just something that any artists do. No, no, for sure not. And you should, or like, I don't want to tell you what you should think, but you know, the way we're thinking of ourselves is more of a, a more of a okay. label. Like, uh, if, okay. if you think about like Wyndham Hill Records uh, from the '80s, or like the ECM mm -hmm. label that is still very much operational, which the labels that I really love and, 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 and respect, they, in a way, I mean, they've released obviously music by various artists, but it was all kind of, all of that music came from like a single universe. Like you could immediately recognize a Wyndham Hill Records um, and up to this day. Yeah, or like happened. Motown in the 60s and 70s. Yeah, yeah that, that's, it's... Yeah. Um, like, but those all those all employed humans to create the music and those humans were compensated. Uh, you have, you know, six co-founders and I'm assuming you guys are engineers or you've you employ engineers. Uh, and by the nature of what you're able to do, um, you're able to now flood uh, the DSPs with music that no individual human being could actually uh, be able to create this level of volume at this scale uh, with this quality. Um, and you have now been able to game the system to get included in all of these playlists. Um, and now you, you know, your artist profile is 300,000 monthly listeners and millions and millions of streams. So that is that that revenue that's being generated is now generating for your company based on technology and AI, and it is not being given or distributed to actual hardworking artists? Well, I mean, first of all, we have actual hardworking engineers, I would say, that are very, very talented. And I, I fundamentally, firmly believe that engineers 
are the new artists. And, you know, these people are very, very hard to find. I actually, I, I, I wrote an op-ed, I think it was for Variety, where I said, you know, I very much believe that in the next few years, we're going to see an engineer coming up on stage and getting a Grammy. I, I, I absolutely believe that because these people a software are, engineer where just to yeah. just to be clear uh, in music, we call engineers, they're recording yeah. engineers and they're the ones that are operating in the studio. You know, they already receive Grammys. You're talking a software engineer yeah. that has created an AI program is going to get yeah. a Grammy. Yes. OK. And these people are very rare, very hard to find. They have a, a very rare combination of skill skills. Mm -hmm. You know, they mm -hmm. often have several degrees, like one in engineering, one in music theory. So these people are, you know, in order to build an algorithm like this, it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of craft. Second of all, we have six um, music composers, <laughs> you know, that are working at Endel, that are operating the machine. So it's not, as I was just describing the process, it's not like you can keep clicking a button and we're going to just mm -hmm. churn out music. It's a very, mm -hmm. very deliberate process um, that we're using to craft the soundscapes. And last but not the least, you know, if you if you look at our catalog, actually a lot of our music that we've been releasing with these artists and we've worked just this year alone, sorry, this past year alone, we've worked with artists like Chad Lawson, who's an amazing neoclassical composer who have worked with Black, who is an amazing Grammy-nominated progressive R&B artist, James Blake, um, mm -hmm. and, and others. And the way those albums were released, actually, they were released under their artist profile. So if you go, uh, even, mm -hmm. and even the James Blake album, like they, since I have a lot, uh, sorry, Black and James Blake, um, so Black's uh, album was Since I Have a Lover, which we have reimagined as two soundscapes, one for sleep, one for focus. And James Blake's um, playing Roberts into Heaven, which was which we have turned into um, a chill out soundscape. They actually came out as new albums by these artists. They just have mm -hmm. our logo on them, and they are called Endel Chill Out Soundscape or Endel Sleep Soundscapes, sleep, sleep Soundscape. But they are not, you know, Endel is not listed as a primary artist on 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 those albums. So what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say here is our technology is actually helping artists break into this that very same category that you're talking about, right? Like um, mm -hmm. if you, I'm talking about functional or wellness music, this category exists and you're absolutely right. It's, it's flooded with a lot of low quality content, some of which it, it does indeed come from quote unquote fake artists, right? Like we're not hiding behind like fake monikers or anything like that. Like we are very explicitly like putting music out as Andal, the artist. So we're, we're because we're mm -hmm. saying, hey, we are experts in scientifically engineered um, wellness music. We know exactly mm -hmm. how the sounds, soundscapes should sound in order to really help you, um, you know, fall asleep or concentrate or relax. And then we're using this knowledge and this technology to help other artists reimagine their music and get mm -hmm. onto all of these playlists. And we have helped a lot of artists, including and not just big established artists like, you know, James Blake or Black, like arguably they may not need our help, but we have worked with a lot of really, really small up and coming uh, artists from, you know, uh, like the new age slash ambient community from Los Angeles. Like there's this amazing indie label called Leaving Records that I really love. We've worked with a lot of their artists, uh, releasing music with them. You know, guys like Cool Maritime, guys like uh, Greenhouse. Um, so, um, sorry, um, Greenhouse is a day. Um, so um, we've worked with artists big and small, uh, or like mm -hmm. we've worked with amazing ambient music OG, Laraji, um, on creating a new album with, with him. So what I'm saying is we're definitely not here to pump, you know, track, to flood the DSPs with content and take money away from artists. W I think what we're doing mm -hmm. is very, 
intentional, very thoughtful. We work with, um, and we have a lot of street cred and artists actually are lining up to work with us. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can see why they're lining up to work with you. And, and I you know you struck partnerships with Universal and Warner. I see it as the mentality, if you can't beat them, join them. And it's kind of, you know, I, I just find it curious and, and you know, um, this, this, I find it curious that, that the CEO of Universal, Lucian Grange, and the CEO of Warner Music, Robert Kinkle, you know, a year ago, they were railing against functional music. And, you know, uh, Kinkle said, I, uh, it can't be that an Ed Sheeran stream is worth exactly the same thing as a stream of falling rain on the roof. And, you know, Grange was talking about, uh, real music isn't, you know, real music isn't drowned out in a sea of noise. Now, everyone is going to um, kind of debate where you draw the line of what is noise and what is music. And, you know, uh, there's nature sounds in a lot of, you know, soundscapes and like what. But it, I find it curious that a year ago they were very against it, trying to kind of elbow out a lot of this functional music, um, meditation music included because they weren't part of it, but now they're like, you know what, can't beat them, join them. Let's just, there is a large market here. Let's take a bit of that market share. Well, I, I mean, look, you're right in a sense, and, and, and I agree with them that, you know, functional music today is an ocean of, a, a very, very fragmented ocean of content of, various quality, some of which is quite dubious, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people have been gaming the system by releasing 30 second long dishwasher sound mm -hmm. albums and rain sound albums that, you know, we just buy stock recordings of rain, cut it into 30 second mm -hmm. tracks, release music mm -hmm. and just take, you know, money away from the pie. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's wrong. And I was talking exactly to Robert um, and I was talking exactly to Michael Nash at um, Universal and I, my pitch to them was always, hey, there's this huge ocean, there's this massive market, you know, mm -hmm. that is, and you're not part of that and your artists are not part of those playlists. What we represent and what we want to do is we want to create an artist-centric high quality alternative to that content. Mm -hmm. So how about we use our technology to help your artists break into this market? And that's exactly what's happening right, right now, right? Like we are reimagining Warner and UMG's catalog as wellness soundscapes using our technology. And now part of that revenue that used to go to you know, people who were like gaming the system is going to legit artists who whose music. Is well, they're going to major label uh, artists. Well, again, as I just mentioned, we don't just exclusively work with the major label artists. You know, we work with all kinds of artists, big and small. And we actually started, mm -hmm. you know, we worked our way up to like the major labels. You know, we, as, as I mm -hmm. mentioned, we've worked with Grimes, who's, you know, famously independent uh we have worked with uh, you know laraji all, all kinds of artists really big and small they were really love mm -hmm. and so our the list of artists that we have worked with hopefully shows that it's a highly highly curated and very intentional process thinking process that went can to choose who we're going to work with can any artist use the endo technology to create this kind of music no, it's not open. Like we, we, we didn't open it to everyone yet. So um, these artists, these smaller artists that you've worked with, um, how did th those relationships come to be? We have actually, I mean, it depends on which artists we're talking about. Grimes actually approached us, uh, which was, mm -hmm. and that, I mean, it all started with Grimes. Like she, like someone from her team actually approached us and they were like, hey, you know, C is a big fan of Endel. She's using the app for sleep. Mm -hmm. um, she wants to figure something. Like, let's let's work on a project together. And that's sure. how AI Lullaby, this new project, was born. Others, we have approached, you know, I was literally just writing emails to 
my favorite ambient artist and I was saying, hey, I'm a big fan. You know, what we're doing is we're not here to steal your identity. We actually want to work with you and want to collaborate with mm-hmm. you and show you what the technology that we're, we have built is capable of. Let's work on the project together. What's the... Uh... What what are the deals that you have when you collaborate with artists? Uh, the royalty structure, like I, you know, I saw in the James Blake wind down one, you know, there were eight co-writers, James Blake being one of them, but you also being another one. Um, how, what is the royalty structure and how does that work when you collaborate with artists? I I don't think I can, can just openly share, you know, how the royalties are split, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a rap share deal. Okay. Um, so, you know, with, with how publishing works when, I guess maybe, you know, you don't have to give me the exact percentages, but, uh, you know, it's public information who the co-writers are and with publishing, you know, there are, there's going to be revenue that is shared amongst all of the co-writers on a project and there's rights that are, uh, responsible for that. Um, so, you know, with those eight collaborators, there are certain rights that each, songwriter has uh just by the nature of being a songwriter the publishing rights that they have so um more so the question i guess is um those songs that have these eight co-writers um the engineers from the company and the the songwriter that you're working with um is uh are you getting publishing on that track as well and what determines when a song is going to have co-writers part of endo co-writers and what songs don't have endo co-writers that's uh, i was gonna talk about that exactly um so we don't get any publishing royalties or participation whatsoever when we reimagine an existing song uh So when we, or, right. or an album. So when we take the stems from an album that has already been released and published and we, we, don't, we don't touch publishing at all. Because um, you're looking at that as more of a, a cover of that song instead of a derivative work. Exactly. That's exactly what we're saying. Okay, that makes sense. It's mm-hmm. a cover. When we work on a new project, when we, you know, kind of, when when a new, when new stems are being created specifically for a, a project with us, this is when mm-hmm. we get involved in publishing as well because we are actively involved in the process of creating those stems. Like we provide the guidelines. We, you know, sometimes we create the stems ourselves. Um, a, a lot of the stems, as I mentioned, are synthesized using our technology. So, yeah, that's when we get uh, publishing as well. Um, the, so I noticed you collaborated with war, um, the world is a ghetto and will sleep soundscape. That is, uh, the world is a ghetto is, you know, uh, original, uh, originally by war. I do notice that there, oh, so that, that's an example of, you'll just get the production credit, but you don't get any of the songwriting credit. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and so for, um, these, or, these original ones, and, and I guess I'm just trying to understand what the different, like how you define the original. So, uh, the wind down James, like that was an original one that, that James mm-hmm. created stems for this project yes. exclusive, the original stems. Okay. Gotcha. Um, okay. And so, um, do you have a direct relationship with Spotify? No. How do you think before you struck these deals with the um, labels that all of your songs got uh, included in in all of these kind of relaxation playlists? What was the strategy there? We, you know, we worked just like everybody else, like literally pitching mm-hmm. our songs to the editors. Uh, of mm-hmm. those playlists, like explaining to them why we think those songs should be included because they are high quality, scientifically engineered tracks that with, with a lot of, you know, the fact that they've been created with, with our technology 
we think is a plus actually because because what we're saying is this again this has been scientifically engineered this sound that you're hearing right is and it's you know we've published peer-reviewed studies about the efficacy Mm -hmm. of our approach so we're saying this is what you should be listening to if you're trying to go to sleep that's exactly how right sound uh you know science says yeah how sleep sounds you know Mm -hmm. sound uh as opposed to just like some soft drone and some you know like felt piano on top of that which is what the majority of those sleep playlists are and we're like that is not sleep sounds. That is not the sound of science. This is the sound of science. We know because mm. we put a lot of effort okay. and thought into this. So this is what you should be listening to. So yeah, we just really, as I said, like worked our way up there. There was no. Who did you use for distribution? Who do you use for distribution? Uh, several, several, actually, several partners. Yeah, we have worked with several partners, um, and I- even today, it, it really depends on which album we're talking about. And by Can the you way, name like, some of the distributors that you've worked with. All of, um, I'd rather not, like for various reasons. Um, yeah, I'd rather not disclose okay. who who our distributors are. Uh, but what I can say is, all of the major label stuff, they are distributing that. We're not available. I would imagine that. Yeah, of course. Right, right. Okay. Okay. Um, Do you have plans in the future if artists are interested in using uh, Endel's technology for there to be an open platform or a model for artists to be able to to use it and create music on their own? Yeah, we're thinking about that. Um, Mm -hmm. Whether we should just, uh, the tools that I mentioned, whether we should just open them to public. Because... All of the music production, AI-assisted music production tools that I'm seeing today, they're more like toys. You know, they're, they're mm-hmm. designed mm-hmm. to create, like, soundtracks to your TikTok, TikToks or Reels, mm-hmm. you know. And what we're doing is something much more serious. Um, and we, we're imagining a world where our technology, you know, sits in any recording studio, and we were just talking about that. I, I was showing it to some people, uh, you know, who operate major labels recording studios. And I was like, this is what mm-hmm. we're built. And they were like, we would love to have an Endel machine in our studio so that when an artist, you know, is working on a new record, we have some stamps, we would throw them into Endel and be like, let's see what Endel comes up with. Interesting. So it would essentially be a plug-in for a DAW uh, where it would analyze the the track or the stems and it would create a soundscape, uh, maybe similar to kind of how a, a synth works. When you play a, a chord on a synth, it can extrapolate based on, you know, C, E, G, and you're like, oh, well, What also works with that is we can harmonize string sounds and create sweeping strings, which are kind of built into some of these, you know, current plugins that we have. But you're saying it'll take a full three minute or so track, uh, a stem of, you know, a guitar part or something like that and build a track around that already. Like a soundscape or or, or like a pad, it would create, for example, a pad, a pad. Yeah. that you would be like, mm-hmm. okay, I like that pad. Like, let's bring it back now. And can you sing on top right. of that pad, for example? Got it. Yeah. That's interesting. So I, you know, I, I, I find that very fascinating. And I think that that, that can be a helpful tool um, you know, for artists and producers to use in the studio is to work with AI. You know, there's a debate right now in the music industry of just like, you know, and and you put this in your press releases and in the articles, you call it ethical AI. And this is why I'm just very fascinated with what your definition of ethical AI is, because what you just described of having a plug-in and a DAW in a studio to be a collaboration tool with artists and producers, that is ethical AI to me. What I find less ethical is when you just have the machine create the track, you have in-house producers and so- producers and software engineers that are now releasing these songs 
to the DSPs without any outside art artist collaboration, just to kind of pull a bit of that market share. Do you know what I do you see the difference like why why one would make me uncomfortable as an artist and one would actually get me excited as an artist? I do, but I think those things go hand in hand. That's what I So mean. you <laughs> I mean I I I understand that because it's all under your umbrella of your company. Um and it's um okay, so I guess what is the what is the direction that you're you're heading as Endel as the as a company? Where where are you kind of leaning into now? We're definitely and again, as I hope you've noticed, right? Like we're not trying to be, you know, just like a foundational model AI that spins out any song of any genre right like we are experts in functional wellness sound uh, with again as i said like even if you as an artist tomorrow wanted to create a sleep record not only mm -hmm. would you need to be able to record it and compose it you would need to go mm -hmm. and study you know the neuroscience of sound if you really wanted to create a record that actually helps people go to sleep and not just like a nice sounding record so we are experts in that and that's what we are laser focused on we want to be a wellness sound company and do you think that um you deserve a royalty on every track that's released I don't see why not um, for a number of reasons. Uh, let me elaborate on that. Uh, because the underlying model of Endel is trained on stems that we, are, so our sound, our in-house composers have created uh, when we were doing all of this research work. So we were working with mm -hmm. neuroscience. They were explaining to us, like, for example, everything needs to be in the pentatonic scale and, and you know, things like certain frequency scale stones, what needs, to be in, uh, what needs to be used in order for the science to work. And our engineer, our, sorry, our composers, uh, they were creating stems and we were creating our model exclusively and only on the stems that we ourselves have created. We've, we have not even licensed any stems. We have not even bought like some royalty-free stamps. We've exclusively created it uh, in-house. All of that was created mm -hmm. in-house and all of that was trained in-house. So now, having spent five years working on this technology and really mm -hmm. harnessing the power of sound to help people feel better, we, I think, when we release music, and again, it's not like we release music every day, um, I apps, and we, take a lot of care and you know into and thought put a lot of thought into our releases why wouldn't we you know be paid for that when someone listens to that right well i i mean there's there's different payment yeah. mechanisms so like the producers that create samples um and loops and sell them on uh splice for instance or these other beats marketplaces or or um, you know, sample marketplaces, um, they're not getting royalties on everybody who uses those samples in their future works. They get paid to use their sample pack. And they're like, I'm going to buy your sample pack for 100 bucks. I can do whatever I want with it. It's royalty free. Um, there's a difference in that people created those samples. They worked very hard on those samples and now they're selling them. You know, it's just a different, it's a different um, payment mechanism and a different business model. Um, but it's basically like, here's my sample pack. You're free to use it for however you want. Do your own creation. Our relationship is done. Our business relationship is over. You, you paid me a hundred bucks. Now go and do whatever you want. I, but you know, and, and those are, those are samples created by actual, you know, uh, producers and artists in the studio, uh, not necessarily a technology. Uh, I, I kind of, I'm curious because I compare this to, or it, there might be some parallels to like when the MP3 came out. Um, you know, by, you know, German engineers created the MP3 uh, technology. 
Um, and they initially, anyone, any company that used the MP3 technology uh, had to pay a royalty to these German engineers for using it. And, and famously, they made millions in a licensing agreement from Microsoft um, when Microsoft decided to use the MP3 technology. And these German engineers became millionaires because they were getting a royalty on everybody who was using this MP3 technology. Now, it's a technology and, you know, one could argue, well, uh, they deserve that that royalty. Now, of course, they weren't able to get the royalties when, you know, it just the floodgates open and then everyone started trading the MP3s and creating MP3s and all of that. But I'm curious, like, do you think creators of a certain technology like that deserve a royalty every time it's used um, or should there be a different business model? Well, I, I'm not going to speak for every technology out there, but I think, I hope that you see the difference between the example that you gave and what we're doing, mm -hmm. again, because we have actual composers, you know, operating the technology that we have built to craft these releases. So essentially they're mm -hmm. using this, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a quasi-DAW mm -hmm. that we have built uh, for ourselves. Yeah, but Logic and Pro Tools don't take royalties when people use their DAW. Yeah, but when people use Logic, people who use Logic, you know, to create songs and then publish them on... Spotify. Yeah, but you said it's a quasi-DAW. So it's like, if you're... that That's where I'm, like, trying to understand that because there were composers and producers and artists that created Logic, you know, and that created Pro Tools. Like, there were actual musicians in the studio... It, it, like in this in the uh space in the offices of pro tools and of logic and ableton and you need musicians that could create a DAW so they understand music but logic apple doesn't charge a royalty when anyone creates a uh a final master from logic and distributes it the, apple doesn't get that royalty but again i mean there's you pay for the DAW. yes but then there's another layer of complexity in our case because we employ music composers that work at Endo. So does Apple. Operate. So does Logic. Yeah, no, but I mean, we produce actual music, you know, we with this technology in house. We think of us as I mean, as, but as, Apple creates actual loops. Like a Apple also Logic has actual loops. And that is actual music that is created that people are free to use. I, I think I mean, we're, we're, I think this metaphor or like this parallel is fundamentally flawed because okay our and the end product of what we're doing is is a a soundscape that is offered to people to listen to and they listen to it every day and it helps them go to sleep it helps them cope with you know adhd anxiety um insomnia we are producing media, we are producing content, but we are like a fully integrated company that has built everything from the ground up, from the underlying technology to the tools that are using that technology to the people. And now we employ people who operate these tools that are based on the technology we have built to produce a piece of music that you know the end listener is then listening on the DSP and they are going every day, you know, to uh, Spotify or Apple Music or Amazon Music or YouTube, and they are listening to our soundscapes and you know, to help them feel better. So do you see, I, I hope that you see how, you know, the end product that we produce is fundamentally different from like a, a, a loop sample or a stem that people are buying mm -hmm. or even logic. No, I, I understand the difference. I think... This is a new frontier. And, you know, if you're not having these conversations and these debates and discussions internally, th this is the conversation that is happening externally amongst the music community. I don't know how ingrained you are within the music community. And so I think it's important for you to acknowledge that uh, one could argue that you are taking uh, money, resources and jobs away from artists and producers. Now, I'm not saying that this is good or bad. This is the reality of the era that we are in. Uh, and that's why I'm saying that like AI can be used as a tool. And I think every industry is being disrupted 
by AI. And, you know, people are going to have to learn to use and work with AI. And if they don't in all industries, um, you know, then they will be left behind. And I get that. And now now music is slightly different because it is a a creative um, medium and it is something that we would like to believe, I would like to believe that there is um, a human component that cannot be replaced, that shouldn't be replaced, and you're working in soundscapes. But if, but it's not going to be long, like you said, a software engineer is going to be standing on stage accepting a Grammy. Do we want all the new artists out there, uh, pop stars and all like best songwriter of the year for the most for the most number of number one hits, are is a software engineer? Do we want that? Like our songwriters going to be losing their jobs? Uh, our producers and composers going to be losing their jobs because why would I pay a composer a hundred thousand dollars when I can pay you know Endel twenty bucks or whatever it's going to be or or a royalty share for to score this TV show? So I I like I know this is your business and I know that this is like you know I'm challenging it right now, but I want you to just like just understand that this is the you know you're dealing with artists. And we're seeing and, and producers and composers that we see what you're doing is it's like, OK, so this is coming for our livelihood. And how are we going to work with this so we all don't go out of business? I think I really don't don't think that you should feel threatened. I really think okay. that, you know, the role of the artist is going it's not going to go away. It's going to change from people okay. who manually craft music to and 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 again, I don't think that's also by the way going going away anywhere anytime soon. Like you know, music. I mean, jazz. Like I'm a huge jazz head. Like I, I love free jazz. Like mm -hmm. that's just it's just not going to go away uh, at all. But I think. A lot of like a lot of the stuff that you just mentioned, right? Like uh, film and, and, and even film scores, like stuff like I don't know, ad soundtracks, uh, like ad scores, like for, mm -hmm. for advertising. I think for commercials, yeah. For commercials, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think what's going to happen is composers are going to operate these tools to quickly churn out like drafts of tracks that they will either be able to finish in uh, off in logic or any other like normal daw or i think we're going to end up with uh, ai powered daws that are just you know going to be where you're going to be able to produce a full song and, and then just quickly finish inside that that daw uh that's what mm -hmm. i think is going to happen so i think the role is not going to go away it's going to change and you know you're, I think you're going to be able to do more um, work um, faster. I, and, you know, that, 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 and this is where we're talking about like a commercial um, commercial music market, so to speak. Sure. Uh, yeah, but if we're talking about music that is designed to be listened to on the streaming platforms, it has been very, very, very hard to break to cut through the noise even before AI, right? Like I mean, I'm sure I'm sure you know this. Right? Like I mean, long before all of this has happened, like a few years ago, it was incredibly hard to break um, a new artist on on on, on streaming platform, <laughs> right? Like almost impossible. It's still yeah no I, yes. And There's a hundred thousand songs that are released every day to the DSPs. How is a legitimate legitimate artist supposed to break through that noise? Well, exactly. So, well, so I think real craft, people at the end of the day still want to listen to consciously. And, and, and that, that is a big distinction, like consciously li listen to things that are authentic, things that are real, um, however you define, you know, authentic and real. Uh, and I think, yes, it's, it's always has been hard to cut through the noise. It is as hard, you know, I mean, it's probably super hard to break, to cut through the noise today. 
Um, mm-hmm. So that's not going to go away. And I don't think AI is the root of that right. problem, frankly. Uh, right. No, I don't either. Yeah. Um, but the, yeah, there's a whole other world of you know soundscapes, um, of wellness, functional music. Yeah, that that is currently being massively disrupted um, and changed. Um, and yes, sure. we are part of that process. Okay. But frankly, I think we're changing. We personally, what we do is we're changing it for the better. I, I firmly and fundamentally believe in that. Well, Oleg, thank you very much for participating in this conversation, and I and I appreciate that uh, you didn't just uh, click leave and, and go walk away, uh, and that you're here to to acknowledge and, and hear uh, you know what the what musicians are discussing and what we are feeling right now uh, when we see AI technology challenging um, and and just working within uh, our industry. Um, and I think it's a, you know, I, I appreciate this discussion and, and I, I completely agree with you that, that, um, you know, it is being disrupted in a way that, uh, that we can use AI to collaborate with, um, and most probably in the near future, every artist is going to be using AI in some form to enhance their workflow and, uh, potentially enhance their creativity. And I and I, I think that we are in completely uncharted territory. Uh, what you're doing is very fascinating. Um, you know, I'm going to definitely dive into the app and explore more on this neuroscience and see how it can help better uh, <laughs> me, me sleep, um, help better my sleep. Uh, I have one final question that I ask everyone who comes on the show. And, and what does it mean to you to make it in the new music business? I mean, it's you know, being able to, for me, especially with what we're doing, it's being able to reach millions and millions of people with our work and meaningfully change their lives for the better. You know, we get tons of fan mail that is crazy and, and crazy touching. You know, you, you have people like cancer survivors that are saying, you know, you've, you, you saved me. Uh, we have people emailing us. They're saying they they, they, they were like giving birth uh, while listening to Andal the app. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. We have people, you know, like we have teenagers with ADHD and anxiety saying, "You guys, you know, saved me. Like seriously, I, I can sleep now. I can concentrate now." So all of this, like when 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 we learned about stories like that, like that is why we're why we're doing what we're doing and. Yeah, that that to me is I just want to be able to reach as many people as possible with our technology and our sound through all of these channels. Like the app is obviously kind of the crown jewel of what we do, but the music that we're putting out on the DSPs serves the same function and same same purpose. Well, like, thank you very much. Thank you. Great day. Thank you. Thank you. Today's episode was edited by Mikey Evans with music by Brassroots District and produced by all the great people at Ari's Take.